in today's episode, we're going to make a battery pack using Tesla battery cells. This battery pack will have a capacity of almost 80,000 milliamps. To put that into perspective, a decent battery pack for your phone are usually around 10,000 milliamps, and those could charge your phone about four times on a single charge of the battery bank. This pack, however, will be able to charge a smartphone from 0 to 100% 40 times on a single charge from the battery pack. And not only that, but in a later video, we're going to see if this pack is able to power a desktop computer. So let's get started. Now there's a link in the description to where you can get these Tesla batteries. After we get our batteries, we're going to want to wrap them in heat shrink. Now putting heat shrink over the individual cells is a good way to protect the batteries from shorts and physical wear and tear. And if you can manage it, you could also wrap the entire pack in another layer of heat shrink to keep all the batteries together as well, as this adds additional strength to the pack. Now that all the batteries are in place, let's take a look at the voltage. For these cells, a normal voltage is around 3.7 volts. And as we can see here, it looks like most of the cells are around 3.3 volts, which is a great voltage for storing the batteries and ensuring longevity. Now we move on to the soldering. Now for this project, I'm using 18 gauge wire, but I would recommend using a higher gauge wire for higher amp outputs. Since this, in this project, I'm only concerned about charging one device, so we should be fine with a small gauge wire. In order to get the solder to adhere to the positive side of the battery, I had to hold the solder in place for just a few seconds before it adhered. For the negative side, I had to use some sandpaper to rough up the contact to give the solder something to grab onto. Now in order to charge a phone, we need a USB port. For this project, I don't only need one port, but you can buy boards with multiple USB ports. I put several links in the description to where you can buy these parts. We need to solder the power leads to the USB board as these contacts are very small, so you may want to use a smaller gauge wire for this. After that, we're done. And after ensuring that the cells are all fully charged, it's time to put it to the test. To test this battery, I use it as my daily charger for about a month. After normal use, my phone only required about 2000 milliamps per day to reach 100% charge. And as this graph shows, I was able to charge my phone for 32 days until I needed to recharge a battery pack. Now obviously, this battery is overkill. It's large and heavy, unlike a store-bought battery pack. You could use less battery cells. Seven cells would last about a week on a single charge, and it would be easier to store. But in reality, this is more of an experiment, and it's not intended to replace your current charger or battery bank. But if you want to see more uses for these batteries, then I can encourage you to subscribe so you can see the more experiments I will do with these batteries. And feel free to leave a suggestion for future episodes in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed.